Uh, let's see. Main channel. What is it? It's. Yeah. Okay, and now click do this. Okay. There we go. Okay, uh, we go. We're gonna wait about a minute for people to join in, and then we will start questions. So, uh, people in the audience. If you have a question to ask, you can uh, click the little hand symbol, or, uh, the request to speak, and we will pull you up into the call sometime. I think, uh, Jeff, do you want to start with the questions from the channel first or questions from audience? Okay. Uh, one second. Uh, let's give it about, let's say we start at 2.05, just for the people who don't see the notification instantly. I need to quickly fix one thing on my audio for the uh, video, for the wiki. Uh, uh. Hey, can you say something really quick? Okay, that's... Uh, there we go. Apparently, for some reason, when we're in the live streaming channel, it comes through on a on my actual desktop audio instead of my specific channel for uh, Discord. That's weird. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Uh. Mm. Wow, 13 people here already. That's really awesome. Jeez. I'm humbled. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, did you see that the interview on YouTube is almost at 3,000 uh, views, I think? 3,000 views? I believe so. Last wow. I checked, it was growing. Wow. Uh, let me double check right now. I'll give you the exact number. Oh yeah, and the wiki's YouTube channel is almost at uh, 400 subscribers. Jeez, that's crazy. Uh, 15 yeah, it's at 2.8k views, uploaded wow. two years ago. <laughs> wow. And how many of those 2.8k views sat through the whole thing? <laughs> uh, let me check the stats really fast. Uh, analytics. Uh, let's see. Um, where is the engagement? Uh, it says that the average, uh, percentage viewed is, uh, eight minutes and 49 seconds. <laughs> but total hours watched is 
200 and uh or 402 hours yes, well, that's pretty cool yeah yeah i know i think that thing's like an hour long isn't it it is uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit over an hour i still have people come up to me and like randomly will go like i saw this video that you were in that was like talking about funkies and like yeah that's <laughs> a long time ago <laughs> That was such a fun interview. I love doing that. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Okay. Was good. We well, just... I, we've waited five minutes since the announcement's gone out. So I think most of the people who are going to uh, join us are already here. So uh, let, I guess let's start with the questions in that document that I sent. Um, Perfect. So the first question is from Fanbrush. Any idea who Khan's voice actor is? <laughs> I think I, I think people have asked me this like more than any other question. Well, maybe maybe the button is maybe the most popular question I get, but <laughs> this is right up there. Um, who does Khan's voice? It is a great voice, and you know I remember the recording session with the guy, the voice actor. And <laughs> to talk with him or just to hear him talk was just like completely normal. And then he would just launch into it and it was just like, oh, this is the guy. We knew immediately when he started, because typically the way that works is you have like five or six different people applying to be the, the voice for the character. And you go through, it's kind of like auditions. You listen to them and you ask them to say things and... You may ask him to do it a certain way or to be a little faster on something or slow down or, you know, things like that. You give him feedback and you let him go a couple of times and then everything's taped and then you go back and listen to it. This guy just nailed it on the very first time. We were like, we were all cracking up and just like thinking, this is the guy. This, there's no question. Um, what the guy's name is, though, I cannot seem to find. I've looked back through my records that I have. I just, I don't seem to still have it. I remember having the sheets and the different people coming in. Um, I just don't, I think it got lost over the years or it just um, was in my email that it didn't take with me. But sad to say, um, I don't know exactly. But it was just an average guy that was just an actor that was... Want to do a voice? It was no nobody special. It was nobody like famous, obviously, or anything like that. But if I ever do come across it, I will definitely post it enough in here. That'd be amazing. I'd love to someday have an interview with Khan himself. That'd be so good. <laughs> <laughs> he may not even know that this has kind of gone on, or that it was as big as it was. I don't. I don't know if he like was in touch with it. A lot of these guys just kind of come in, voice something, and move on, and just never hear from again, you know. But it would be funny. Okay, our next question is from uh, eighty twenty. They ask, uh, "Were there any funkies that were uh, going to be scrapped that still made it into the game?" <laughs> well. Yeah, I saw that question. It was an interesting question, an interesting take on it, because um, <laughs> there were a lot of the ones that we would do is we would go, uh, we would go and create as many designs as we could, and some of these have been posted up in, on the boards, but we would create as many as we could. We would take the top ones and put them into a story that kind of made of a weird, wacky sense to us. Um, and whatever didn't make it in would be kind of set aside for possibly a next go around. Like we had some that were like knights in armor and stuff like that, that were kind of cool that never made it in. Um, but this question was interesting because it was like any that were going to be scrapped that made it into the game. We didn't really think of it like that. Um, so we didn't go, oh, well, okay, we're going to scrap this and then go back. And the only one that might be kind of the, exception to that is dot because dot was one of those ones that we had planned out three different ways and we were gonna do it and then it just we didn't have a place for it and it just was kind of towards the i guess it was maybe in the second it was i think a second round 
and we just kind of put it back on a shelf. I don't think anybody felt real. I remember one or two people felt like strongly about it, but everybody else was kind of like, eh. And then we were scrambling and we needed to, uh, for Comic-Con, we had to get Dot or a Funky ready for it. And everybody was just like, what do we have the farthest along? And we had already prototyped Dot in a couple different ways. And so she was just the easiest and quickest to market that we could put together. Um, so that's kind of how Dot made it into Funkies. And now Dot's a staple of limited edition Funkies. <laughs> I think everybody that has a, a decent collection has really gone out of their way to find one. Yeah. I remember I used to have the the box with all of them, like sitting at my desk that we would send out to media after Comic-Con um, and then beforehand, obviously. But yeah, they came and went, so they're out there in one way or another. Okay, our next question is from Candy Goy. What was the original purpose of Light Marshall? Just to have a different version of our beloved boy or something else? <laughs> yeah, I think it was just to have a different version of Marshall. Um, I don't think there's anything really much more to it than that, unfortunately. Um, we had a whole backstory for Marshall that we had, um, and I think I've mentioned this before, but we had we had a whole backstory for Marshall kind of worked up in our heads. I don't think we ever put anything down on, like, writ, wrote it out or anything, but we always would talk about it, and it was all real, very, you know, Outlaw Josie Wales, Clint Eastwood kind of thing, and just like he's a lone drifter, you know, and goes between realms and <laughs> that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, no, there's no, uh, nothing other than just having a different version of him. Sorry. Rachel asks, were there any plans for more plushies? Yeah, we actually had a few plans for different plushies. Um, Let's see, I think the original number that we did was four, if I'm not mistaken, and I think we had specked out like eight. So there were four other ones that we were going to do at one point. I don't have the number or the ones on hand right in front of me, but um, I probably have that information someplace. I'll look it up and get back to that. Awesome. Uh... Give you a more detailed version of which ones were actually, and I may even have some artwork on it. I'll have to look. So, our next question is from uh, Terminus. Uh, Was there lore for Marshall that was planned but cut? Uh, Just, as I mentioned, just kind of between us and just kind of like so that when we wondered what he would do and how he would approach the scene, it was just kind of with that in mind. So that was like, okay, listen, this is his background. This is what he does. He's a lone dude. He's kind of blows in and just kind of, you know, he's almost Wolverine like, you know, where he's just, he's just, he doesn't have that ferociousness, but he's just chill and just like, he's a loner. Um, so we did have something, but we just, we never, there was never a place for it or anything. Okay. Uh, next question was from Lucia. Uh, which unreleased slash cut funky slash feature do you most wish had been implemented? <laughs> That's a lot of cuts and slashes. Um, unreleased. Well, like I said, I well, there's a funky that was based on a scuba diver that I always thought was I really tried hard to get him in and. At one point, I, you know, I thought that he was going to get in, and he just never did. The night also was a good one that I thought. I thought both of those were really strong. Um, we had some funny ones, too, with question marks on them, and it was a little too much like the Riddler, but um, things like that that were kind of neat. Um, I'm trying to remember. There was... Uh, yeah, I think that was probably it. There was... Uh, yeah, that's probably it for the funkies um which feature uh, i don't know about features i think features are i think the right features were put in there 
Uh, there is one thing I wanted to quickly ask in regards to this. Uh, so there, was there going to be another diver besides Tank then? Because I do know Tank made it into the uh, Daydream Oasis. Yeah, the there was submarine. a. There was one that was a little different that didn't quite make it in. It was. It was just like a more of an army looking one. Um, it was mo- more of a GI Joe kind of looking thing, but he couldn't have gone in because he just was not. It, it was too GI Joe ish, I guess, and made everybody think of that immediately. So we made Tank to kind of like as an alternate version of that one. But I still liked it. <laughs> I still thought the original one was kind of cool. Ah, okay. Uh, next, uh, Garg asked uh what's your favorite song on the soundtrack you know i couldn't even begin to say um what's your favorite song mine oh let's see i don't even know i haven't played in a while i'll be honest i've been too busy with life but uh from what i remember it was uh i'd have to say the I'm trying to remember what place it is. It's one of the fun Kiki Island songs. I can't remember exactly which one. I think it's uh, the volcano one. The like background music and the volcano one. That's my favorite. That's, pretty good. Yeah, that's a good one. I think I'll go with that too. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's uh, like next... picking your favorite kids and you know your favorite. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. Uh... Oh, uh, actually, I have a quick question that's not on this list, but, uh... I'm sorry, we're gonna we're have to t- make sure that's approved before it gets answered. Um, no, go ahead, just joking. Um, uh, is there any unreleased yeah, Funkies music that you still have? Not that I have, no. No. Ah, oh, dang. It would be great to hear more of the soundtrack, if there is any. Yeah, I don't even. I see the next question is like, who made the soundtrack? Um, that's a good question. It was a, it was just a studio that we like a recording studio that puts out music for this purpose. And yeah, I don't have any of it, and I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, next question is from Blit. Uh, were there any other funkies that were supposed to have a voice besides the ones we heard? No, no. Um, I, I mean, obviously, when the when we were developing the cartoon series, there was talk about uh, different voices and stuff, and obviously, UB had a voice, and um, but no, we didn't have any other plans for. Um, more voices than what was there. We usually what we'd do is we would script out the story and then kind of go get the voices that we needed for that. So once the script was kind of laid down and stuff, then uh, or set it in place, then we would go and get the voices that we needed. But I think that's it. Uh, I would like to quickly just say uh, for anyone uh, talking in the questions for Jeff channel, can we please keep that? Just for questions and not have discussion in there, please. Makes it easier to keep focus on topic. Um, so next question is from uh, Legion. Uh, if Funkies had continued to this day, what are some shows or other games you would have liked to see? Uh, or you would have liked to make a series of? If Funkies had continued to stay, what are some shows... Or the games you would have liked to have seen, like tie-ins, basically. <laughs> oh, like, like tie-ins for media and stuff. I'm assuming that's what the question is. That's kind of because we had talked about we had talked about doing comic books. That was kind of cool. I know that, and um, and like trading cards. I know things like that. I don't know if that answers the question or not, but. We did a lot of like um we had a lot of different plans for things that we would do for like promoting it and uh 
and like different licensing ideas. Um, and you've seen some of that, I think, with the images I've sent before. Um, but we talked about doing like PC accessories at the time, like mice and keyboards. And um, of course, we did the speakers and the USB sticks. Um, and we talked about doing shoes and um, things like that. Um, we talked about doing handheld games. Um, so like a separate little handheld that you would do play. Um, we talked about doing large 12-inch side funkies. That was kind of cool. Ooh, that would have been uh, awesome. We talked about uh, doing funkies with accessories, so interchangeable between figures like hats and gloves and masks and things like that. Um, we talked about doing funky hubs. So there's like, instead of just the UB hubs that were different decorations, we talked about actually having the figures become the hubs. Um, glow in the dark funkies. I remember we had that. Um, and, uh, The Funkwell lights. Yes, the <laughs> Funkwell lights. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to think of. Yeah, that's about all I got. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Yeah, but... Uh, next question is from, uh, Kitty. What type of music would Marshall listen to? Oh, m definitely. Marshall would have been into jazz, like slow, slow jazz. He's just a chill cat, man. <laughs> uh, okay. My next question is from, uh, Scent. Uh, what was the inspiration behind the design for Funkies in general, uh, if any beyond a human-like figure? Well, was the, the inspiration behind the design was the, uh, you know, at the time we saw a lot of this urban vinyl in the mainstream, and a lot of people were collecting it, and you see that still to this day with, like, Funko and stuff like that, and... Um, you know, you know, just all the all the different characters that they do and stuff like that. But um, but we wanted it to be a little different, and so we came up with a shape. And originally, the bumps on the top were eyes, and they were just characters like that. And but we realized, what if we just gave them regular eyes, and these are just bump attributes? And we thought that was kind of a cool look. So it just kind of grew from there. Um, we had a lot, a couple different designs though initially, and I don't think any of those exist still. But the original ones were like square heads. Of course, the whole game itself originally was going to be a USB game, um, but yeah, you know, it's just uh, I think that um, yeah, it was just trying to get something unique that was. A cool shape that had that could be um, skinned several different ways and have a lot of different um, different looks. Okay, let's see. Uh, what what do we have next? Uh, our next question is from Shiny. Uh, he asked really nitpicky question. Uh, with the first series of Funkies on the packages, uh, why do only some of them have names written on them? Uh, some have names written on the bottom, some don't. Uh, always wondered why and if there was a significant difference. Uh, yeah, if, oh no, wait. And if that signifies different waves of release, uh, f for the first series. I believe that the names came after that originally we didn't put them on there and um see what <laughs> the funny thing was that when we uh first started marketing these i was putting up some of the early animation clips for, onto youtube 
And these, you got to remember, this is in the early days of YouTube. And so I would throw these up there and it started growing. People liked the, you know, the animations that we were putting up there. We promote it and stuff on social media and things. And, and when we had kids would put their own videos up there, we recognized or realized that they were actually playing with them like they were just action figures almost. And so that kind of led us to think, well, why, how come we're not putting the names of these on these so that you can easily, you know, choose between them or, you know, be able to collect them easier, I guess is the best way to put it. And, and so we started doing that after that, after that first round, I think, yeah, even in the middle of the first round, I think it was a running change that we made to the packaging. Okay. Uh, our next question is from, oh, I'm probably going to butcher this name. I think it's, Mikey's no Mike um, is mad. Oh Mike is I'm I'm really bad at reading. I need to go back <laughs> to school. Okay. Uh Mike is Mav asks uh from a game design perspective, was there any order of operation when designing a funky? Uh as in would the mini game be designed mechanically uh slash gray box uh first and then have a funky attached to it, or would a funky be designed and a game would be built around the character's concept? Um, what we would do is we would come up with the the funkies. That was the first thing. So what funkies are going to be in this series? And when we, once we, actually, I step, maybe I didn't take a step back. First of all, we would come up with the storyline. So what was happening in this new version what was the story from there we would put different funkies in the story and that would help us um with um trying to figure out this uh who was where and and then from there we would um assign them games and we always had a running list of games that were kind of that we'd either done that we could reskin or that there were new ones that had come out and that we could use from the developers. And so um, it was just a matter of kind of matching up which ones we thought would be funny and <laughs> with which games were there, like, you know, with Bones, for instance, you know, with the fishing and and uh, and Deuce and stuff like that. So it was just the matching up the games was the last part of it. Once that was done, it was kind of off to the races. Okay, our uh, next question is from Guest15. Uh, were there any other unused design slash, uh, unused design slash ideas for fungies? I'm currently aware of the unreleased prototypes, DC iFunk Adventure Pack 3, uh, the ones from the uh, diversity uh, propaganda poster, uh, shown in this post, that's the one image where the, all the funky heads are against the wall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the uh, unused paradox green designs for uh, Sarge, Knight, Voodoo, and the target funky. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, um, I think that's all of them, at least all the ones that we have left. Um, so there's no more. There's not really a whole lot of other ones. Well, I did mention a couple today that were kind of out there that, um, like the scuba one, that kind of evolved into tank. But, yeah, I mean, I think the ones that you've seen are the ones that we've done out there and that have been shared. There's not too many left that aren't, that I know of. Okay, so uh, we now have a few little last-minute questions from uh, the questions for Jeff channel. I am going to do a cutoff. Uh, no more questions in that channel, please, because we want to get to some voice questions if anyone does want to actually come up and talk to Jeff. Uh, so give me one second to scroll through some of these messages and find the questions. Um, uh, Kitty asks, uh, are there any more uh, images of concept art from the canceled TV show? That you have? I think I've shared everything that I have. Um, I think I've put everything out or 
just about everything. I'm, I'll have to go back and check and see if there's anything laying around, but I think I've put out there most of what's uh, most of the good stuff anyway. There may be some pencil sketches and stuff like that. Um, UB asks, were there uh, going to be more dots on sale back when uh, Dot was uh, in production? Well, as I mentioned, you know, originally we had done out three versions of it and, uh, and it just, you know, it got moved up and then it became the one off and then we didn't want to do more versions. So yeah, that's, uh, what was the original question? Was it, are we doing more? Uh, what do you say? Sorry, what was the original? Uh, he asked where they're go- going to be more dots on sale. Yeah, no, just there were, but then there weren't. And so there, we weren't going to do any once we made them a collector's item. Okay, our next question is from uh, Cupcat. Uh, do you think Funkies could make it if uh, they were originally made current day? Good question, Cupcat. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think that it's a, it's a cool... Obviously, we need to update the technology a little bit, but I think that, you know, obviously people like you have proved that there's still a demand for it and and think that there's something to it. And if we were to, you know, push it in a bigger way, then I think that it could still have a life. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I'm firmly convinced that it could have let, gone on longer than it did, obviously. And if you listen to the first interview that we did, um, you'll hear the backstory of kind of how things wound down and stuff. but. In short, it was, you know, they were doing something on the neighborhood of $30 million and it wasn't a big enough business. And so they, for Mattel, so they basically, after they had kind of picked the bones of it for their other products, they just kind of shut down, shut it down, moved everything over and kind of, yeah, wound it all down and didn't develop anything more about it. So. I firmly believe that it was still growing and that there was still a demand for it. And with the right updates and the right characters that we could have had some really good fun with it. And it would have been a great cartoon series. And I know that that would have been great. Okay. Our next question is from, uh, knuckles. Uh, Jeff, do you still keep up with anyone else who worked on, uh, the funkies game? Uh, do you guys still regularly talk about the game or the past? <laughs> uh, I do keep up with some of the people. Um, no, we don't tend to talk about it too much. <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know. I think that they think it for me, it's a sore subject and, or just, you know, we'll mention it in like happenstance or something like this. I might mention it the next time I talk to him and tell him that I, but yeah, I've, there's a couple of people that I still talk to. Um, that were on the team. Flacco asks, uh, sorry for the last minute question, but do you know who uh, voiced Yubi on the uh, Wendy's disc? I don't know. No, I think it was just somebody that one of the air, on-air talents that we picked up and had him do. That was a whole mess. We had to get so many like sign-offs and stuff from Wendy's and just... It took forever to get that even going. Uh, uh, Toko Take asks, uh, do you uh, know why UB Funky's toy distribution was so minimal in Latin America countries? Uh, when I was younger, I only remember being able to find Season 1 in Fun Kiki Island. Uh, kept waiting for the next series. Uh, after that, but I never found them. Yeah. Um, is it Toko Take or is it Toko Taki? Uh, hmm. I do not hmm. know. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the distribution was just on purchasing demands. Um, the first series was sold in by um, the original company, Radica, when it was on its own. So it was sold in in a big way, and a lot of times what these buyers do is they'll they'll look at it and say, okay, I, 
I've got to fill this up and I've got my big toy manufacturers and then I've got the smaller ones and we were one of the smaller ones. And so for us, it was a pretty big, um, pretty big coup to be able to get it into every place that we wanted to get it into. And they, and the initial sales were ex- very exciting and they were buying it in a big way. When we got purchased by Mattel around that same time, now Mattel is having to split things. So they're going, okay, well, we have all these different toys that we need to sell in and Funkies is a part of that. It's it's not one of five that are going in, it's one of 20 that are going in. And so the buy ends up and there's only so much money that the buyers have to play with. So that's why the, um, so it's, it's, that's why you didn't see as many of them in the, in the later series, particularly in the last one, obviously. Okay, our next question is from uh, Clown Man. Uh, were there any other merchandise like uh, other funky speakers? Um, not that you'd want to buy, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a FAMPS that we did that was basically just Funkies for girls because obviously girls can't like Funkies. They're too male-oriented, right? So (laughs) that's what the whole concept of FAMPS, I think, has pretty well been documented. I hated it. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Um, uh, Redux asks, were there any other plans for... Uh, sparkly funkies like the speed racer rarities. I thought they were neat. Yeah, those were pretty cool. Yeah. Um, no, no, no extra um, plans for anything like that. But I do agree that that was a cool take on it. It's good job. Uh, Meme XD asks, uh, do you still have pictures of the prototype USB sticks before the funky design got finalized? I do. Didn't I share those? I think I've shared them before. If I, I'd have to go back and look and see, but um, yeah, I still have those pictures. Those I know I still have. I'd recommend checking the uh, Funky Founders form meme just to uh, double check if he's already posted them before he goes on a wild goose chase for him. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bait says, Hi, Jeff. Uh, are there any other projects... Uh, you are working on that use the same uh, Y2K styles as Funkies. No, sorry, bait. There isn't. Um, I'm not working on any uh, any kind of toy toyetic properties right now. I'm in a different industry, so and no, not working on them. <laughs> Uh, so this is spoilers for the game, but, um, so if, if you don't want to hear spoilers for the storyline that is in place currently, uh, I'd recommend just zoning out for a minute. Uh, UB Vale asks, uh, does Dr. Tinker, uh, go to prison or get banished from Funky's Town after, uh, being discovered that he has, uh, uh, evil on a good side? <laughs> say sorry say that a question again uh does dr tinker the evil one that is master locks uh ever get imprisoned uh or uh banished from funky's town after being discovered oh um no he doesn't no no i mean Funkies would just want them to be nice, everybody to get along and stuff. And once we saw who it was, clearly he just needed love and compassion, um, you know, before. No no sense in sending him off to jail when he could just be reformed. Okay. Uh, Two-word reviewer asks, uh, I really, I really liked that. Uh, oh, wait. I really liked that when newer zones were introduced, they had stories that followed uh, next to them. Uh, Paradox Green, Funky Key Island, Dream States. Uh, Were there any unfinished slash unreleased zones that you guys had already... uh, 
that you guys had already written storylines for? Um. Mm -hmm. Well, we had the uh, we had some of the D we had some DC ideas that were kind of thrown around, and so there was some of that written up. Um, but that's about it, honestly. I think everything else has been out there. We didn't. We tended not to work out too far in advance, and um, the DC ones were kind of like where we were wanting to go next, which would have been the next release and when things started getting pushed back it was like well we just kind of moved on to other projects in the meantime until we were told that we could start working on it again but that never came so. uh let's see uh next one is from weasel uh uh Weas weasley Ah, oh, my brain is like dying today. Uh, have you heard anything from Mattel ever since Funkies was shut down? No. no. Nor do I think I would. No. No. No, unfortunately, you know, I think that was just shut down and they just moved on to something else. That's kind of the way those uh, corporations work. Okay, uh, that is all of the questions in the actual Jeff channel. So uh, if anyone actually has any questions that they would like to say, uh, please use the uh, speaker feature. I don't remember what it's called exactly. Uh, it's the little hand icon. Click that and uh, we will bring you or invite you up one at a time to ask your question. Uh, just please DM me your question first so I can make sure it's uh, appropriate. Or if you just want to have a discussion with Jeff, either or. <laughs> uh, uh, in, in the meantime, while we uh, let them do whatever for a few minutes, uh, are there any, um, are they, is there anything about Funkies that you would like to uh, tell them that you haven't already told us? Um... Well, I can tell you that um, we, <laughs> of course, we did the, you know, the monkey art, the monkey king art show that we did. Um, those I've noticed that those, some of those <laughs> submissions are floating around these days. I see them every now and then on eBay. Um, I thought that was interesting. And, uh, we had tried to get the funkies um, featured in a in a parade in New York, a village Halloween parade. Uh, there was plans to do that, um, and um, we had talked about doing video contests. Um, we talked about doing um, a try before you buy kind of thing, where people could try the software in store um yeah and uh i think you already knew about that um we had talked about doing a funkies profile page so that enabling kids to create their own funkies in game and then post to their social page uh things like that were fun that we were looking forward to doing um but um yeah, you know, I think we just wanted to mainly give the tools to our next push was really more about giving them kids the tools to kind of unleash their creativity, you know, and create new things, as you saw some of the things that we were kind of starting to work towards. Um, just, you know, wanting to extend the reach and of the funkies and uh, keep the collectors engaged. I think that was a big part of it. Um. Okay, so we uh, have uh, uh, Weasley coming up to ask his question, or their question, I should say. Uh, you have been invited. You just have to click the button. There you go. Okay, so my question, and I thought this was really interesting, 
Um, somebody asked this, and I thought this was interesting. Was there any other Chat Funkies plan for the game? So, first of all, is this Weasley or Wesley? It's Wesley. I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, I'm so bad at reading. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other Chat Funkies? Uh, yeah, we had like six of them, I think, at one point. Six or eight. So I'm trying to remember what they looked like, but I'll have to check and see if I have anything on those guys still. But I know. Do you that remember what? Were... Do you remember what the names were? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to look up. I'm, I don't know off the top of my head which ones they were or what their names were, or they may not have even had names at that point. But we may have had the artwork set up for them. Um, yeah, there were more. Anyway, to answer your question. Yes, there were more planned. Um, but we just didn't know how many to initially launch, and so we tried to go with a manageable number. Okay, uh, if there's any last thoughts or uh, questions you have for him, uh, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will move you back down to the uh, audience, and we will bring up Candy Gore. You have been banished to the audience. <laughs> go! I don't, ha- I don't have anything else, but thank you. Okay, Back down uh, with you. Down you go! And now down uh, we go. will be inviting Candy Go up. Uh, Candy Go, you have been sent an invite. You just have to click the button. I don't know what it is because I've honestly never used it. <laughs> uh, there should be like a join a speaker or something like that. Let's see. Uh, in the meantime, I gotta double check these other questions. Okay. Uh... Candy Gore, her name is Candy, but feel free to call me Eve, Evie, or Icy. Which one should we call her? Hmm. Uh, and after Candy comes up, uh, we will have uh, Redux, uh, then Hyrek, and Bootleg. Unless, oh, candy. You can do it. Don't forget, please, before uh, requesting to join, uh, say, uh, send me your question just so I can verify it. Oh, I'm getting pinged in general. I'm having trouble. Uh, can you quickly tell uh, Jeff I use they slash them? They slash them. Great. Thank you for letting me know. If anybody's having trouble getting in, maybe Wesley can let them know since he just did it. What to click on? Yeah, uh, Wesley, could you uh, tell them how to do it in general really fast? Because that's where most of them are chatting in. Thank you. Uh, Yeah. Let's see. Sorry, this is our first time using the stream channel. I This is the first time I've ever used it, so I've never been in audience position before. Uh, uh, sorry about that. It, it wasn't popping up on my screen. Um, first off, very honored to be able to talk to you. Um, UB Funkies means a lot to me. Uh, <laughs> um, second off, I, um, I've noticed something in that Dolly is never referred to as an actual gender. And uh, they keep getting referred to as they, or depending on how you hear, like, I, I personally hear more, uh, sorry, tired. Uh, I personally hear Marshall when he's talking about Dolly referred to Dolly as an it. Uh, did you intend to make Dolly non-binary or was that just like a happy coincidence? I think it's a happy coincidence. I, I don't think we went into it thinking that it would 
we would make them non-binary. I think it was just, uh, in hindsight, I would love to be able to say, yes, you know, of course we planned that all out. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Who was, who could have been smarter than us than to come up with that, you know, but unfortunately that I don't think that was probably planned out like that. All right. Well, that's all I had to say. Thank you for answering. Uh, like Thank I said, for. like I said, UB Funkies means a lot to me. So it's great to finally get some little closure on that. All right. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to move you down. Uh, now we're going to have, oh, one second. Let me check the order. Uh, we will have Redux come up Redux. now. Uh, Redux, I have sent oh. you an invite. Uh, invite to speak. There we go. Hello. Um, I was wondering, um, was there a reason that certain stores were picked for the collabs, specifically limited to an Argos? They seem really random to me, and I was just curious. Um, you know, it's kind of like fries and milkshakes. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I just saw that you like that. Um, yeah, you know, it's we tried to make it random. It was intentionally meant to be random and intentionally meant to be <laughs> just things that didn't go together. We put them together, um, you know, like bones fishing. I mean, that I kind of go back to that because it always stands out to me like, why would a skeleton be fishing? And it's just silly things like that. We like to kind of put things together like that, that... And from a storyline standpoint, and even from a game standpoint, um, it was all about connecting the unconnected. Awesome. Understandable. Okay. Thanks for being you, a fan. Uh, do you have any more questions for him before I move you back down? Not particularly. Redux, you are down, banished to the oh. netherworld. <laughs> Okay, uh, next we have uh, uh, Hyrick. There you go. You have been sent an invite. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. I can. Hello, Hyrick. All right. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Just want to say. Is it Hyrick or is it Hyrick? Yes, it's Hyrick. Hi, Rick. I just want to say, really happy to talk to you. UB Funkies is one of my favorite toy lines as a kid alongside Transformers and Legos, so it's cool to be able to ask the man behind it this question. <laughs> well, thanks for being a fan. <laughs> so I noticed that the huge overarching gimmick of the Dream States was internet connectivity. There was the chat rooms, there was online multiplayer, and I think they even implemented the high scores by the mall in Funky's town. Yep. So my question is, were the phones for your crib, were they meant to do something? Because I remember having a cut scene and fanfare for it, and then I put it in my room and being so confused because they didn't do anything. So was there any planned features for those phone items? Well, it's funny you say that because there was a plan to do something um, at one point connecting the items and the functionality, um, the phone being one of them. Um, but there were a couple other ones as well. It just never got to that point. We just never, it was kind of like one of these things we talked about, you know, what we'd love to do at some point, but it never happened. I see. Yeah, because my, my initial theory was maybe like a friends list was going to be implemented and maybe you could like send private messages to friends you had added or registered to your phone or something like that. Yeah. We wanted to do a lot of mobile connectivity um, with the Funkies. Um, at the time, it was kind of basic. I mean, we didn't... iPhones were just kind of had come out recently, so it was... Oh, yeah, definitely. So it was kind of... Uh, it was things that we looked at as opportunities and taking advantage of, and and that was, yeah. So you're correct. That is a, a direction that we had... Um, thought about or talked about hey. <laughs> nice to hit the nail on the head or almost you go, Eric. thank you thank you for answering my question it was nice Very chatting confirmed do you have any more questions before i move you down or nope i am ready to be banished soldier banished. to the shadow realm you go 
Okay, and next we have uh You be uh, banished. Platinum, I believe that's how it said. I I I I'm so bad today. Uh you have been invited up. Bootleg Seraphim. My name is Platinum. My pronouns are they and them. Good. Hi. Uh, if you're having trouble, I think uh, we, uh, Wesley said, oh, there we go. Uh, am I available for talking? Can you hear me? Yes, there is a bit of static coming through your mic. Wonderful. That always seems to happen. <laughs> Uh, well, as always, for hello, Jeff. Hello. We can't start a question without that. Hello, uh, how are you today? Oh, I've been just fine. How are you? Oh, very good, very good. It's cold and wet where I am today. Oh, me too, buddy. Me too. <laughs> uh, on to the main order of business. Please. I was wondering if they called you up today and said, Jeff. Mm. Jeffrey, Jeffrey mm. Funky, we mm. need Funkies too. They called mm. you right now and said that, and you had to go into the whole production phase. What elements of the brand would you want to keep steady? I'm thinking, like, would there be background music that you would want to reprise or specific Funkies that you you would want to bring back? <laughs> or just like areas themselves, like that sort of situation. I think I'd like to have a, uh, I think I would pick a zone and I would have all the speakers. Um, so like Mayor Say So and, you know, all those type of players who were kind of narrating the stories over into one playable zone. I think that would be fun. Mm. I think if I were keeping ones, I would just keep select ones. There's certain ones I think I could do without. That's completely understandable. <laughs> Which ones would you kick? Well, I do have a soft spot for Mulch because, you know, he's the he was the special one I had as a kid, you know? The <laughs> special one. Nice. Uh, I do quite like... Uh, well, you've mentioned him a couple of times, but I do like Bones. I think he's a little funny. I think Bones is great. I like the, the funkies that don't have like a specific face, it's very funny to me. Like Scratchy, there's nothing going on up there, man. It's just a record, you know? I think designs like that are interesting. I think that is kind of inherently funky. Ooh. <laughs> well done well played yeah i think that uh you know i've always i've never been a fan of zener um i've never been really a big fan of boggle um and i know i'm crushing people's hearts right here i've never been a huge fan of glub or um don't Stitch. like glub you say that i know i know <laughs> All those good but, fans in the chat. I know. But there are some that just are, I mean, like Bones and Deuce and Lotus, you know, some of the initial ones that we first came out with are the ones that, and Scratch, you know, are the ones that I always kind of lean towards as, you know, that we, if we were redoing it, they would have to be there. They're kind of the staples. Yeah. Man, a new Deuce figurine would be cool. Just like a, he's just a guy. He's <laughs> just a guy. He's just a guy. I liked, uh, I liked a lot of the Funky Key ones as well. I thought the, like Soul, I thought was a really great design, and oh, yeah. um, and uh, Flurry was pretty cool. My favorite Funky will always be Web uh, Webley, just because his game is so damn fun. Yeah, that's a good. That's a great game. I don't know. I have a soft spot for Mahjong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, are there any other questions that uh, you'd like to ask before I send you back down? Uh, no, I think I'm all set. You have a great day, Jeff. Thank you. You for too. Having me on. 
thanks for joining okay uh next we will be having uh oh, i'm so sorry i unironically do not know how to say your name because of the x it is physically breaking my brain i i think it's supposed to be like carl but with an x i'm so sorry <laughs> there's your invite up i'm ah <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Good evening. Um, uh, yes, you hit it right on the head. It, it is it pronounced Coral. Uh, you can just call me Andre. Uh, Good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, honestly. Um, a Funkies is one of my favorite games, even though since I'm from Portugal, uh, Funkies was not actually quite accessible. We only got the first series. We didn't even get Funky Key Island. Well, so... When I discovered there was an even more series after the main series, I actually got kind of, kind of distraught. Uh, <laughs> but it's fine. I, I get to experience it now. Um, uh, but one of my, my my main question that I wanted to do, uh, to actually ask was, how did you feel once, like after the the game's closing, uh, the fact that uh, Funkus was actually so ahead of its time because now we see games that are like a no brainer. Uh, like Skylanders and uh, the whole like Amiibo uh, system is pretty much and like a lot of different companies try, try to like do the same thing that Funkies uh, probably did and honestly I think Funkies did a lot more than um, than these other projects. No, oh, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously when I. <laughs> When I saw the things that were coming out into the market, they were things that we had done or had thought about doing. And it's just a little bit of a dagger in the heart, you know, because it's like, I it just, it still would. I think the things that, that really got to me more than seeing another company do it was when I see Mattel do things that we were already doing. Hit right oh, hand. yeah. That to me was just a stab in the back. I mean, it was just like, Oh, come on, really? <laughs> so, yeah, I feel your pain. You know, I just, I, you know, I think that it had its moment and it was great and it could have been more and wasn't. Um, but yeah, I think we did some things really, really good. I was actually so excited when I saw those like concept ones that were like on a, I think it like a toy, a toy uh, convention or something yeah. like the D, the DC ones. Uh, <laughs> That 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 was a, like another like small thing I was gonna ask, which was, do you think at some point we're gonna see like a publishing on the internet of like the open source of the game, so like the fans could like continue it on their own through modding doubtful. and stuff? Doubtful, very highly doubtful. Yeah, it's just Mattel doesn't do that. I mean, they're not gonna take something that they own and give it away. They yeah. just wouldn't, unfortunately. I think it would be. They should. I think that that would be amazing and that would be, you know, just something that I think it would just incredibly spike the, the game itself. Uh, but I, I don't see them ever doing I, that. I think it could even be like a market, like a good market decision because by releasing something that they're not going to use uh, anytime in the future to the public to, for them to mod to, sh to see if there's actual interest in the game they could release a new a new series completely renewed uh from the ground up i uh, think agree I, th I think you're 100 percent right yeah yeah it would be amazing if they would um unfortunately it, I, just knowing the people that are in charge over there it's not yeah likely. i will still hold out to the dream where i can customize my own funky keep the dream alive <laughs> but yeah that's it thank you so much for for your time and i'm thank glad you. that i actually caught this event on time because i just got home uh, well thanks for being a fan and thanks for joining on yeah for sure you can banish me now <laughs> you're the shadow you, realm you be banished okay uh one second let me double check my order uh we have redux coming back up uh they have uh, another question that they just thought of. I've got about uh, 10 minutes left, so any last hello. minute questions? I have risen. Going. Hello, right, uh, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. You are proving true to your name. Yep. 
Nobody can banish me forever. Hold on. Let me go to the DM or else I will never be able to get a coherent sense about this question out of my mouth. Well, you're simply not real. <laughs> hmm? You're simply not real. That is also true. I don't exist. All Fries right. So... Milkshake. Yes. Hmm. And you're, are you still 19? Correct. I turned 19 this month. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was a cool birthday. Excellent. All right. So um, my question um, is, how did the hub evolve over time? Uh, I asked this because recently there was a user who posted a Fallout prototype with a unique foot plate. And then there's also my weird bones that I believe I DM'd you about, who also has a unique foot plate. And neither of them look the same as the released like ones, but they also don't look similar to each other. So I'm just wondering like how different was the hub originally? Not that different, honestly. It was still had connectors the same way that it does now, or it did at the end. I mean, it just um I think the first versions, I mean, it was just the design on the outside that mainly changed. The inside, I think, had a code change at one point, but it was to fix a glitch that we were having with it where they weren't seating properly. Um, but no, I, I think that it was, I don't think that that many changes were made to it. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions, uh, Redux? Redux has gone silent. Banished. Banished for AFK activity. Ha! Huh. Okay, um... Let's see. Uh, I think I'm waiting for one more question to be posted. Uh, also, are you recording this and uploading it on YouTube? Yes, it will be up on uh, the UB Funkies Wiki channel. Or it can be picked apart and dissected. <laughs> and someone will uh, be forced to transcribe the whole thing. Uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Cupcat has a question. I will. It won't be mixer. An <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will not be me. Welcome back, Cupcat. Hello. Hello. Um, sorry, I have COVID at the moment. Um, oh no. So, I I really I love really love these. Um, thank you very much. I'm very so honored to be able to ask a question today. Absolutely. Um, I hope that you feel better soon. Thank you. Um, if you had a time machine and could go back to before UB Funkies was created, would there be anything that you would want to change? Well, you know, that supposes that I don't already have a time machine. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying that it could be. Um, but yeah, let's go down this road. If I did have a time machine, would there be things I would change? Hmm. Yeah, I think I would probably change some things that we did. Um, you know, I may think twice about doing the speed racer line. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it's funny because we really did want to do, um, our own series, but we're kind of pushed into this and, enticed into doing the movie tie-in and uh although i think it was a good tie-in it just uh obviously wasn't a great movie um so i think i might think about doing that a little differently and uh maybe going with our own story and just kind of building on the success we'd had with um with the first series and then funky key island all right um yeah, what would you uh, do think... differently if you were on the team and you went back in time? What would you do differently? Um, I would probably beg them to make the UB Funky show. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Good call. Yeah, that would have been amazing. Uh, yeah, it was a um, fun meeting. You know, we went there and met with the Nickelodeon people and the uh, for a little bit. We met with the um, cartoon network for a little bit and it looked like it was going to happen instead you got monsters high <laughs> uh, oh. it's a shame 
I know. I know. Bummer. Okay. Um, Any thank more you. questions before I move you down? Nope. Thank you. You are banished. Boom. Okay. Uh, so, as Jeff said earlier, he doesn't have much time left. Uh, there are three more questions, uh, if you're fine with that, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cut off the rest of the questions right now. Please do not send me any more. The ones that have already been sent will be answered. Um, so let's see. That was Cupcat. I think next we have uh, Redux backup. Redux actually had a microphone failure uh, and has a second part to his original question. Oh, okay, question. I guess we'll let him come back up. Hmm. <laughs> Hello, thank you for being very patient with me. Um, You're entirely welcome. Thank you for coming back up. Thank you. But um, I had another question. So it wasn't the hubs that like changed, it was the feet pads? Because I can send pictures of the three different ones. I just find it really interesting how different they all are. Is there a reason that like a bunch of them were super different? Feet pads on the funkies themselves? Yeah, because... Yeah. Um, oh, I thought you meant the, the hub. Well, yeah, I originally was talking about the hub because I assumed that it would be the hub that was, like, the thing that was changed or, like, modified. I don't know why I would think that, but it's, like... I don't know, the Bones prototype that I assume... I, I really get the feeling that he is. And then there was the Fallout prototype, which I'm not sure if you saw in the Funky General channel a while back. But they're both, like, really different from what was originally released but at the same time they're not really that similar to each other so yeah. it's it is, just i wonder what happened with that basically is it truly a prototype one of the, our prototypes that we had i mean i i get this feeling that he is i can't say for sure obviously because you know i wasn't involved in any of that is it written but, on anywhere it's not written on, but he has some smudges. His face is super squished, and um, his his feet pad are a lot different than what was uh, normally released. I included a picture of like one that was produced, and then I also included a picture of mine. And mine is like white and like molded in. His magnets function, but his feet are like too big, and he's not hollow inside like the normal funkies would be. Mm. That does sound like a prototype. Yeah. Well, if it was a prototype, a lot of times we would get those in and the feet would have connectors that were a little different um, because we were just looking for functionality. And there, what we would test them on is wasn't a hub. We would test them on um, a board. And so they would need to connect to the board itself. And then when we went to production, the, the feet would change to production feet to connect into the hub itself. So it could have been some of that. I'd have to see it. Um, I'll try to take a look at it and see. Um, or if you want to send it to me again, I can probably take a look at it and give you a better answer. But um, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, you may have a prototype there. And and if so, it's probably just the difference between the prototype and the, uh, the testing prototype and the production. Yeah. Okay, any more questions, Redux? Did you did your mic stop working again? Did it happen again? <laughs> it did. Uh, they say they have no more questions, so we will banish you back down to the Shadow Realm. Thank you for coming on. He's a man uh, of few words. <laughs> um, let's see. Looks like Wesley's got another question down there. Uh, next, we actually have uh, Kitty. They ha they want to ask a question about the funky personalities. Uh, you have yeah, been invited sure. up. Hey, Kitty Hi. Candies. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. This is my Good. first on stage. Oh, congratulations. I was wondering if there were any personality character development ideas for the Twinks in the Deuce and what seem to be two of Master Locke's henchmen in the car cartoon concept art. Uh, say that. Could you repeat the question? I was wondering if there were like any personality ideas for some of the 
characters in the TV show. Oh, yeah. From the concept um, art. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that we saw Yubi as kind of like a young, playful, kind of innocent um, character. And I know there were a lot of uh, female characters that we were planning. Um, but it was really, it, the story was going to kind of take place between Yubi and one of the female characters primarily um, and their interaction. I don't think that they were romantic. I think they were just friends. Um, but we just saw a really good kind of storyline base there. And he was just going to be really funny and really kind of goofy, I think. Quirky. Um, just really kind of you know, always joking around and lighthearted. Oh, he sounds adorable. That's actually I how I imagined. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought that he would really uh, be a good character and would have come across, across really good on, on screen. And actually, I was looking over the concept art with a friend, and I was saying that Twinks gives off some sort of big sister vibes, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, it would have been a good series. It still would be a good series. I think it would hold up today, even. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, any more questions before we send you back down for the next person? Were there any personality ideas for the Deuce, the rare Deuce shown? <laughs> huh. Well, Deuce is kind of like a hillbilly kind of. Uh, he likes Billy rock and roll kind of, and uh, he's kind of a fifties kind of hip cat kind of dude. I think that's basically the way that Deuce was kind of thought of. He's, he's the guy that's going to have the souped up pickup truck and, you know, he's got his sleeves rolled up and he's listening to rockabilly music. That's kind of deuce. Yes, this is perfect. <laughs> and my last question was, what were any personality ideas for the two minions that we see in the background? Which ones? The two minions. They look like cutting. minions. The two oh, sorry, minions. Yeah, keep that kind of uh, fading out, right, as you were about to say. Sorry, I'm on mobile. It's okay. Just to be, repeat it one more time. The two characters in the background, the ones with one eye that look like Master Lux's henchmen. Yes, the henchmen. Oh, yes. Um, I think they kind of... I think, I think the henchmen are kind of like... You know, I would refer to them almost as... They're kind of like the robot stormtroopers, you know, in Star Wars a little bit. They're kind of goofy, they're kind of funny, but they're kind of inept also. You know, they're trying to do what he wants, and they're trying to scurry around and do it and look imposing. But at the same time, everybody that sees him kind of is like, yeah, you're not that scary, really. I would have loved to watch this show. <laughs> it would have been good. It would have been really good. Yeah, so I would binge this on Netflix. <laughs> exactly. We need to come up with a. We'll crowdfund it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I would be part of this. Okay. I will raise money. This needs sure. to exist. I think. I think if we did uh, do a crowdfunding, it would work pretty well. Okay. Uh, any last questions before we send you back down and get? Uh, uh, let me double check who's next. Uh, Wesley, back up here. I think I got confused with two of the characters I was asking about. Let me scroll back and find it. Perfect. Go back. Okay. You can DM me anytime. Uh -oh. Thank you. The purple, these creatures with one eye, the purple one and the blue one. What exactly are they? Ones with one eye. You talking oh, about Wasak? I, I think the Wait. minions from the promotional art. 
Oh, the menus yeah. for the promotional art. Uh, I don't Where's have enough concept. Where should I post it? I saved the image. Uh, yeah. Repost it in questions for Jeff. Okay. Yeah. I'll check it out and get to you. Okay. Please work. These two characters. <laughs> ah, yes, those. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> That's more like uh <laughs> it's like Ren and Stimpy, you know, I think is the idea between these two. They're kind of inept and but they're also like the big one who you think would be the big imposing one is the one that's the <laughs> the weakest of the two. Yep, I got that dynamic from them in the picture. Yeah. And the other one is is meant to be uh, the brains of the unit, if you will, between the two of them. What exactly are they? They don't seem to be funky. Yeah, they're not funkies. They're different. What exactly are they, if I'm allowed to ask? Uh, they were going to be characters that would... Um, if I recall correctly, the storyline was something where these were kind of ancillary characters that would be able to, uh, they were kind of on the lookout, I think, for these, for the Funkies and kind of like, uh, hmm, like jailers, I guess you could say. Okay. Uh, any last questions before we move you down and get Wesley up here? Nope. I am ready to be banished. To the Shadow Realm! Okay. Uh, we got, we got to get Wesley up here and then... Uh, I think that's it for questions. Okay, so my question was... I want to go back to the Chat Funkies titles for a second. Do you remember where the, where the other Chat Funkies were supposed to be? Where they're where are the other chats funky? No, I don't think it ever got to that point yet, actually. Okay, my other question is who did Deuce in the commercials? Who did Deuce in the commercials? Oh the you be funky. <laughs> if you be funky. <laughs> um just like a voice talent that we got on a commercial set. Uh I can't really remember, honestly. We had uh Again, we just when you're doing a commercial shoot for those voiceover things, you have like about five different people that you're kind of choosing between, and then you just listen to the one that kind of fits the scene the best, I think. And and he got the job. Yeah, sorry, I don't know. His okay, name. I guess my final question is: if Makeship were to contact you to make um, UB Funky's plushies, would you do it? Well, I don't know that there's a big enough market for the plushies. I mean, they're, they've they got to support something, right? So it'd be great to do it for sure, but it, it's got to be supporting an existing game or something. I think that would be, you know, that would be ideal. Um, I don't know. Better question is, would you buy it if they did it? Even oh, yeah, I would. I would, yeah. I mean, even though there's was not my, a game well, out, Yubi Funkies was my, was my favorite game growing up alongside Toontown, but, you know, that was my <laughs> favorite game. Wow. Hmm. Then yes, I would uh, do it. <laughs> that'd be great. I'm trying to see if there was a game that I was trying to ask what the point of it was. Um there's no point in some of the, some of these okay. games. <laughs> I can just head you off it. right there. Some of these okay. were just completely pointless. The, that was in that's what we liked about them. Um when some of these things didn't have a point, um you know, I can't tell you how many times people have asked me what the button does on the game. I'm sure half of you here, probably probably most of you here, don't know what the button does, and maybe a couple I do. I still don't know what it does. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's the big mystery. All right. Yeah. Um, I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Thanks, man. Okay. I'll move you back down. Uh, so there is one more question, but this is a... Uh, one that I have to read because it's UB, UB cannot. 
uh, speak English very well, so I will read out his question. Uh, he yeah. asks uh, if the UB. Uh, one second. If the DC collaboration <laughs> had became a reality, what would the theme for the next series have been? Well, if it had been if the DC collaboration had happened, then it would have been a DC themed series. I mean, it would have been Flash, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, uh, Superman. I mean, Batman. It definitely would have been those characters. Probably supporting a movie, ideally, something like the Justice League would have been a great platform to support with it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what the story would have been, but it would have been a fantastic time trying to figure it out, I think. Ah, uh, okay. We actually do have one more question from Candy that I forgot. I'm so sorry. I've been scattered because I've been getting lots of DMs about questions. Uh, I see so, Stardust down there also asking. Yes. Uh, Stardust, please message me your question, and uh, then after I verify it, I will pull you up. Uh, Candy, you have been sent your invite. You can come up whenever. There we go. I actually got in quickly this time. Um, I... Uh, first off, thanks for letting me come back up. Uh, second off, I would like to personally ask about um, how you view other people's interpretations of the Funkies. Like, I know I, for one, draw them as, like, super fluffy, even to the point of, like, drawing Marshall fluffy with his, uh, with his cape covering some of the fluff on his neck and stuff like that. But, um, like, I see some people as drawing them as having, for lack of a better word, just having skin. <laughs> Uh, I see some people drawing them as, like, short-furred. I see some people drawing them as, like, super long-furred. Did you ever really have a kind of your personal interpretation of... Or is, does it, like... Ver I, I assume it varies uh, by specific funky because some of them look a little different. But, um, like, specifically with Yubi or Marshall, like, did you have a personal interpretation in mind of how they would have any sort of covering, for lack of a better term? Yeah, I didn't see it real. I had never really cared for the skin-based ones, like you say. I think that those ones are always kind of funny to me. Um, the fluffy ones are interesting. Yeah, you know, that's a big miss, honestly, when we look back and try to see some of the funkies that none of them are really fur-based or anything. They're all very smooth. So, yeah, I think that it's funny because once now that they're in your hands, when you look out there, it's, you know, to see what you guys have done with them and taking them in new directions that we never would have probably thought of to do. So I'm always blown away and impressed by um, what you guys have taken it to another level. And, uh, you know, just, I mean, every artwork that I see is a little bit different. Some of them are a little more basic than others, and some of them are just insanely professionally done. Like, you guys should be working on something like that. <laughs> you guys should be designers in for a toy company working on toys like this because they're so well done. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm always blown away, blown away. I love the furry ones. I need to see some more of those. I guess I need to look and see what you've submitted. All right. Well, thank you for answering the question. Like I said, it's an honor talking to you. Uh, thank you for, you know, everything you've done in making this wonderful series. And thank you for uh, keeping up with the community, even though the series has been gone for over a decade at this point. Oh, my gosh. That's right. That's crazy, isn't it? No, it's thank certain. you. Thank you, Candy. I appreciate the kind words. Um, yeah, it's I'm always thankful that you guys are just still so... Um, interested in it and taking it to new levels so keep up the good work all Thanks. right will do thank you for answering my questions i am ready to be banished back the to shadow the world. shadow realm okay <laughs> uh so uh with that we're basically at the end of our uh session for today are there any last things you'd like to say jeff you know, I just, again, want to thank everybody for showing up, first of all, for listening. Um, I'm happy to be doing this as the second one. Hopefully there'll be a third at some point. And, you know, I just, uh, you know, I think that it, I'm always uh, blown away by 
uh, your commitment to it and the fact that you're still, you know, still paying attention to it, you know, and still engaging with it. Uh, as Candy said, you know, it's been you know, over a decade gone. So it's crazy um, that it still holds some value. And it makes me think that maybe what we did wasn't all that bad and that it should should have still been around or at least had a longer shelf life than it did. So um, I'm not on here as much as I uh, can't in as much as I should be probably, but I do try to check in regularly and see what everybody's um, what everybody's posting and talking about. So again, if you have questions for me or feel free to submit them into questions for Jeff and uh, I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Awesome. Uh, well, with that, I'm going to end the recording. Uh, just one quick reminder, anyone who is submitting questions for Jeff, please do not use that channel as a discussion channel. Uh, if you want to reply to something in there, ping the person in general and talk about it there. But that's specifically for questions for Jeff. Uh, with that, that's uh, the end of our episode. So thank you guys for coming out. Uh, Thanks for putting this together, recording. Mixer. Appreciate it. Anytime. I love hosting these. It's fun to get to sit down and talk to you. For me okay. as well. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.